Okay, let's go on. Today, I'm going to make a, uh, or at least try to attempt to make a gluten-free planter for my tomatoes using a 20-gallon Rubbermaid uh, trash can. The plan to do is drill some holes in the bottom for drainage, and then I'm going to invert the lid like this, drill a hole for my plant and some holes for, for water to get in and for it to breathe. And then I'm going to, uh, using some zip ties, going to tie the lid down. So what I'm hoping is that this will collect water and block the sun from the dirt where the uh, weeds would grow, and I won't have to weed. And hopefully I'll be able to grow some good tomatoes. So let's see. start off with this hole here for the plant. Now I'm going to put some holes in the lid just to help with a little bit of uh, evaporation because we don't want to seal it up completely tight. So we'll just put a little few holes around here. That's probably good. Okay, now I'm going to put some holes in the bottom for drainage. That should be enough for proper drainage. All right, let's get some uh, soil in there. Okay, so here I have my planter bu bucket or my 20 gallon garbage can. Now I've put three bricks down the bottom and I'm going to put some landscaping fabric on top of it. This will help keep the uh, soil or compost from reaching the bottom and clogging up the holes. And also, if I decide to put some earthworms in there, it will help keep them from escaping. So what I'm going to be putting in here is I have this uh, skin back here. This is a compost bin that I built last year. And I, I got a bunch of grass clippings piled up, and when they were piled up, they were about a foot above the top rail. And they have decomposed down to about here. Now I've used some of it, but I was probably left about six, eight inches of um, partially decomposed grass. And this is what I'm going to use for my soil. Not sure how well it's going to work, but we're going to find out. So, let me fill this thing up. First I'm going to take the landscaping fabric, fold it up and put it in the bottom. I'm 
fill this thing up with some compost. Alright, you get some water on it, get it matted down. Alright, well I got this in, got the tomato planted. Um, it was a little difficult getting the tomato through the hole without breaking it off the branches, but I think it did pretty good without damaging too much. But I forgot to uh, drill the holes to hold the lid down. So, a little old school since I don't have an extension cord handy to run out to the garden here. Got an old crank drill, and I'm going to make a few holes, drill down through the lid, through the lip, on the uh, lower part of the can. There's one. here. We don't want the wind blowing off the lid. Oh, it's muddy there. more.
Alright. So now I think we're done. We're gonna level this up a little bit there. I got a, at least one more to do. I'll post up some pictures and some video of that once it's all done. Thanks for watching. And I'll let you guys know uh, as far as the progress and how well it goes. Okay, now I've got my tomato planted with the cage. You can see I'll scan up here and you can see the... Back it up a little bit here. So I've got my tomato with this cage. I just drilled some holes in the lid so the cage slid down inside. And it's pretty sturdy. I know I always have problems with it uh, with them blowing over in the wind or when the tomato gets really tall being too heavy. So I think this is going to be pretty strong. Over here. I got my red bell pepper planted. I'm not going to put a cage on that. And I got a few other pots I'm going to plant using the same uh, grass mulch or compost. And we'll see how they grow. So let me get some water on these and I'll show you how well they work when you water them as far as the uh, lid and the water. Get the water on. You can see the water drains fairly quickly, and uh, zoom in on here. So hopefully, any rain that I get, will it'll help collect it, and um, we'll see how it goes. Let me zoom in on this other one over here.